every year at NYU in New York, I'm part of a, of a workshop and they get people, young composers from all over the world, really, come into this thing and they write some music and eventually it's played by this orchestra that the musicians union donates to uh, NYU and then we all, the three of us, judge these pieces. It's almost like American Idol, you know, what do you think? Well, I, you know, it's horrible, it's great, oh, it's whatever. <laughs> no, one, no one's ever mean, that's for sure. But it's really remarkable, let's say out of 30 or 50, you know, applicants, there's always two who are like already completely there, you know. And then what, then how do they get known? How do they get that first job? And how does that first job lead to the second, et cetera, et cetera? <clears throat> There's no, that's, uh, that's what I'm asked all the time, you know. And it's not like if you were a lawyer, you know, a law school, uh, med school, there's a certain kind of, you know, you get into Brown or Harvard at NYU, Columbia, etc., Stanford, Yale. Um, it's sort of automatic, you know, that you'll do well if you want to, you know. Uh, but this is, everyone's story is completely different. Like John Williams, he was known as apparently Johnny Williams, and he was a pianist, and you know, to play for TV scores at first. And he did music for, you know, one day the composer of Gilligan's Island and Lost in Space couldn't make it. And they said, anyone, anyone here? <laughs> and he raised his hand and said, yeah, I'll try that. <clears throat> and the rest is history. You know, that's his story. You know, someone's a guitar player. Yeah, here. You know, Snuffy Walden. You know, how he got into it. He must have known someone, but he, you know, he was in a... I don't know if he was in a band or, or something, but he's a great player. And he used that instrument, his guitar, you know, featured in so many of his scores, you know. God, he did well. Uh, but in terms of advice, it's like, <clears throat> it's being someplace where you're, where there's the possibility <laughs> of getting work. And that's here more than anywhere, you know. And New York is, you know, people do things in New York and there's so much indie movies and productions and all it takes is one thing and someone sees it, bam, you're off to the races. And that networking thing and you call and go and meet and see and listen to, you know, read an ad, oh, I'm looking for a composer, you know, I mean, as crazy as that sounds, it's, it's happened. And I remember a couple of uh, applicants I had at NYU, and they said, well, what should we do? And I said, well, you know, are you married? No. Do you have kids, or are you attached to, no. All right, that's good, <laughs> for starters. Then get yourself out to L.A., you know, and I'll, I can give you some names. You could call a few people, and some of them have, have done well. You know, it's actually Sean Callery who's, I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm really completely responsible for getting him, him started. Uh, we did a show called La Femme Nikita, where I did the theme and he did the underscore, and the producer listened to his first score and he called me and says, this guy stinks, I'm going to fire him and you're going to have to do it. I said, whoa, 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 hang on, we'll work this out. Well, what do you mean we'll work it out? <clears throat> we'll work it out. He'll come to my place, he'll play me the music, I mean, he'll play me what he's done and I'll uh, and tell him what's good about it and bad. And he said, all right, just give him one more chance. He comes over and he just overwrote like crazy. I said, just take that out. This, that, this, that, out. Uh, all right, but I'm not giving them their money's worth. No, no, that's not the point. You don't get it. Anyway, producer liked it and went on to do 24, Homeland, and he's doing 
just fine. <laughs> but it's chance meetings, and it's, it's so much luck involved. It's about being ready for the lucky moment.